What's up? This is Ben from Wad Prep, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to get your best score possible on CrossFit Open Workout 24.3. Before we get started, I do have to mention, I am not associated with CrossFit in any way, shape, or form. CrossFit does not endorse Wad Prep. CrossFit is a registered trademark of CrossFit Inc. These opinions are my own, and they're solely from Wad Prep and my company. So we are not related, have to say that. This Wad Prep Strategy Guide is brought to you by Sandbar Callus Care. If you stick around to the end of this video, I'm gonna teach you how this little tool can make sure that you get a better score on 24.3 and you don't rip your hands, which is gonna be a problem a lot of people are gonna face. So if you want to go grab a discount right now, you can go to store.sandbarcalluscare.com, enter both of those products into the cart, the, the full sandbar and the salve, and then you'll actually get the salve for free if you use the code WADPREP. So go do that or stick around and I'll show you exactly why you're gonna to wanna to use this before 24.3. And also, if you want the complete strategy guide to go along with this video, so that means extra bonus content on how to do chest to bar, bonus content on how to do bar muscle ups, and a whole bunch of other stuff, including strategy guides for your mindset, scaled pointers, master's pointers. If you want all of that, go to wadprep.com slash open, enter your name and email, and I'll send you the strategy guide completely free. And it's way better than just watching this video, I promise. In order to make sure you know how to do this workout properly for your division, make sure you go to games.crossfit.com to read the standards. Here's a quick standard for you. Did you know that in order for your score to count, you actually have to start under the pull-up bar before you step up to the bar for thrusters for both the first part and the second part. So be sure you go check it out. And what I mean by the first part and the second part, I'm gonna be talking about this workout in two parts. There's part one and part two, even though technically it's only one workout, but I'm gonna mention part one, which is the chest of bars and thrusters. And then I'm gonna mention part two, which comes after a one minute rest, which is the bar muscle ups and thrusters. For today's strategy video, I'm going to do something unique. Normally I talk about overall strategy, then I break down each individual movement. For this, workout, it is very special, and I'm actually breaking it down into four distinct levels. So depending on what level you are at, there is going to be a part of this video that is specific to that level, where I'm gonna talk about how you should approach the thrusters, chest of bar, and maybe bar muscle ups. So let's go down and break down the levels really quick. Level one is for athletes who are just trying to get chest of bar. Maybe you don't have any yet, that's okay, we'll talk about that. Or maybe you know you can get chest to bar, but you know 100% for certain you will not be getting a bar muscle up because you're not even close at all. No open magic is happening, you can't get a bar muscle up. That's okay, that's level one, and that's what we're gonna talk about first. Level two is for athletes who think they can probably get a bar muscle up. Here's a spoiler or a sneak peek. If you can do seven unbroken strict pull-ups and six or seven chest to bar pull-ups, you can probably do a bar muscle up. So if you're in that range and you're like, Ben, maybe open magic is happening. I might be able to get a bar muscle up or two or three in this workout. That is for athletes and they're gonna be in level two. Level three is specifically for people who are like, Ben, I can do bar muscle ups. I might not be the best in the world. Maybe I can't do 15 unbroken, but I can do several unbroken. Bar muscle ups are good for me. I'm gonna do bar muscle ups in this workout. That's gonna be level three. And then level four, these are for the athletes who are crushing it when it comes to gymnastics. So if you're like, Ben, I can do a lot of bar muscle ups. They're easy for me. This, this workout, I think I'm gonna be able to finish. That is level four. So let's talk about level one athletes. These are athletes who can maybe do chest to bar, but they know that bar muscle ups are not happening. Here's some good news. This workout, you don't even have to worry about part two. You don't have to worry about the heavy thrusters and the bar muscle ups, because if you're not getting a single bar muscle up, then it does not matter. The tie break score for this workout is when you get done the first part of lighter thrusters and chest to bar pull ups. So you are treating this workout as if the second part doesn't even exist. It is a race to see who can get done the first part fastest for those who can't do bar muscle ups. So your strategy in this workout is to get the best tie break score possible. Now, some of you are thinking, okay, so I just sprint through the workout? Not necessarily. It's five rounds. It's a lot of volume here. I do not want you to fall into the trap that most athletes will fall into. They're gonna start by doing their thrusters really, really fast. They're gonna get on the chest bar and they're gonna try to go as fast as humanly possible and they're gonna burn out. Unless you are really proficient at chest bar, that might put you in level two here, but unless you are extremely proficient at chest bar, for almost all athletes in level one, I would highly suggest starting slower than you want. That means forcing yourself probably to break up the thrusters. 
maybe do six and four. So when I say six and four, I don't want you to do your thrusters and then drop and then spend 20 or 30 seconds walking around the gym. I want you to make sure that you're picking that bar up quickly. So drop, take a couple breaths, shake out your arms, pick up the bar and go back into your set. But I want you to force yourself to break up the thrusters so that you're not crushing your heart rate and really burning out so that you don't have energy for the chest bar. If the thrusters are difficult or heavier for you, I would suggest wearing lifters. So that means wearing weightlifting shoes to help elevate that ankle and it's just gonna make the squat and the drive into the thruster a lot easier. That is a little hack that you can use to make the thrusters feel better. But again, the goal here for level one athletes, don't burn out on the thrusters. Save yourself for the chest bar and that's what we're gonna talk about now. So for level one athletes, there's a few different things I wanna break down. If you're someone who's like, Ben, I have chest bar, I can do 10 plus unbroken, I just know I can't do bar muscle ups. Then I want you to focus on forcing yourself to do small sets of chest bar, especially in the first couple rounds of this workout so that you don't burn out. That means doing sets of six or four. So imagine I just got done moving my sixth rep, I shake it out, take a breath, and I knock out four more. This isn't the workout to try to practice butterfly pull-ups for the first time. I would suggest going with whichever version of chest bar pull-ups are more comfortable for you. If it's kipping, great. If it's butterfly, great. Just make sure you're not hopping on that bar for the first set and doing 10 unbroken just because you can, because what's gonna happen is your chest bar will deteriorate and then you're gonna be spending a lot of time resting. So force yourself to break up the reps early on both the thrusters and the chest bar. And then once you get to round three, four, and five, to get that good tie break score, you can crank it up a couple notches only if you feel good, but chances are you won't. I think for an overwhelming majority of level one athletes, the best strategy is actually to do chest to bar singles. I know it seems crazy, but look how fast I can do these. So I touch my chest, I drop, shake it out, jump in again, touch my chest, drop, shake it out. All I'm doing is I'm focusing on getting my chest to the bar quickly. And then as soon as I ch touch my chest to the bar, I drop. I'm not lowering myself down slowly. I think a lot of people trying to do unbroken sets, they're gonna burn themselves out. So if you start with singles, maybe you'll feel fresh enough at the end to start to do bigger unbroken sets. But a lot of people are gonna make a huge critical error of going really fast in the beginning, doing big sets in the chest to bar, big sets of thrusters, and then they're going to be forced to resort to singles because they're gonna be too burnt out and they're gonna take a lot of time resting. Your goal is to not rest at all. Instead, do faster single repetitions so you can get through this workout quicker and get a good tie break score. So if you're someone who's like, Ben, I can hardly do chest bar. I'm worried if I'm even gonna be able to get any, then here's what I want you to focus on. There's two things. Number one, I want you to really make sure that you're jumping into that rep. That means jumping into a really aggressive hollow position to get a lot of momentum to get up to the bar. So aggressively jump into your hollow position. Don't be the athlete that comes up and goes like this, has no momentum, and then they struggle to get enough momentum to get their chest to the bar. So jump into that rep. Feet in front of your body, hands in front, slightly behind the bar, and really focus on a big aggressive kip. If you do that, then it's gonna make that kip a lot easier and you're gonna get your chest to the bar. If that's not enough, then you can use what I've used in several opens before, the box drop-in method. The box drop-in method, all I'm doing is I'm taking a box or a bench or some sort of J-hook, I'm getting up to the bar, I jump into the rep, it gives me a ton of momentum to get my chest to the bar. If you've never tried it, then chances are you might be able to get your first chest to bar using this technique. It's not quite as efficient and I prefer if you don't use a box, but if you're having your trouble getting your chest to the bar, this is a great way to jump into that hollow position, get tons of momentum, and accumulate chest to bar reps. If you are a level one athlete that's trying to get your chest to bar, then please make sure you check the links in the comments below and in the description. We have other videos that exist on YouTube that can help you learn how to get those first chest to bar pull ups. So go watch those if you are a level one athlete that's worried about getting any chest to bar at all. Next, let's move on to level two. So level two athletes are those who are like, Ben, I can definitely get through the chest to bar. Maybe, just maybe, I'll be able to knock out a few bar muscle ups. So these are people who maybe have done a bar muscle up or two in the past, or maybe they can do a few, but they're worried if they can do them tired. That is a level two athlete. Your job in this workout, as a reminder, 
is to not worry about your tie break score. So I do not want you to push the workout like level one athletes where they're trying to get through that first part as fast as possible. I don't want you to do that. Instead, I want you to treat the first part almost like a warm up. That means breaking up your thrusters. That means doing small sets on the chest bar, maybe even singles, just to get through it. Because your goal is to leave yourself four or five minutes or maybe three minutes at the end of this workout so that you can knock out a bar muscle up. Because the difference between zero and one bar muscle up means everything to you. So when you attempt this workout the first time, be sure, pace that first part. I, don't, I want it to almost feel like a warm up so that when you get to the bar muscle ups, it's your time to shine. Remember, for bar muscle ups, I really want you to focus on getting a gigantic first kip. That means starting behind the bar, jumping up feet in front, and you're letting, that, you're letting that momentum from that jump help you with that kip so that you can get up and over the bar. There are tons of videos that I have here on YouTube about how to get your first bar muscle up, so I can't go into too much detail here, but make sure you go watch those. A couple cues you can think about is, imagine there's a sheet of glass over the pull-up bar. I want you, as you're transitioning, to try to break the glass with your forehead. Or, if you're trying to figure out where to look with your eyes, when you're doing the kip, look up, and then when you go to transition, look down at the floor. Those are a couple cues that really will help people get their first bar muscle ups. And I'm sure that because of this workout, we're gonna see a lot of open magic. There's gonna be thousands and thousands of athletes who get their first bar muscle up. And I hope that's you. And if you're still on the edge and you're like, Ben, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it, then guess what? The box drop-in method is an outstanding method for learning those first bar muscle ups. So. I'd stand on the box, I'd get my hands in a strong position, maybe choke up a little bit. I'd suggest wearing grips as well. So I'm jumping into that kip, big kip, big swing, and that's gonna help me get up and over the bar. If you've never done a bar muscle up, I highly suggest try the box drop in method in warm ups. And still, if you can't get it in warm ups, use it during the event, and you might just see some open magic happen. And I hope that this video, or one of my videos that I have, helps you get your first bar muscle up so that you can climb the leaderboard by tens of thousands of places. So again, with level two, all you're focusing on is going slow and controlled and slower than you want on part one to just leave yourself that four or five minutes at the end to do nothing but attempt to bar muscle ups. You might surprise yourself. You might even get into round two of the second part. Who knows? But I don't want you to go fast in the beginning because that's gonna leave you too tired to attempt those bar muscle ups that are so crucial to get your best score possible in this open. As I mentioned previously in this video, hand care is ridiculously important for this workout. If you rip your hands or pop a blister or open a callus up, you will get a worse score on this workout because it's just hard to do pull-ups and bar muscle-ups and thrusters when your hands are open and bleeding. So here's what I suggest. Grab yourself a sandbar. This is a sandbar callus file and basically all you do you can see here, I have a ton of calluses that have built up over the last few weeks. All you do, wash your hands, warm water, then you grab the bar, just like you would a pull-up bar, and I'm gonna rotate five one direction, and then five the opposite direction. And what's happening is when I grab this, all of the hot spots, all of the potential areas where my calluses will catch on the pull-up bar and rip open, they're being shaved away. So once I've done that, then I take the shaver or the file, and I just smooth out all of the calluses. You can do it here on your hand, you can do it on your fingers, you can do it in the middle of your palm, and then now all of my calluses, they're not gone, because it's very important to have calluses, but they're a lot smaller, and there's nothing to catch on the pull-up bar. So now I'm at no risk to rip my calluses during this workout. So if you wanna grab this, this is an awesome tool. It also comes with this salve, so if you did happen to rip, or like I have a crack just because my hands are dry, I apply this after my workout and put it on overnight and it's gonna help my skin stay pliable and it's gonna help my skin stay healthy because dry, hard skin is what causes calluses to rip. So don't do that. File it away and then add some of the salve. If you wanna get a large version of this salve completely free, go to store.sandbarcalluscare.com, add the salve and the sandbar to your cart, enter the code WADPREP, and you'll get this for free. Now let's move on to level three athletes. So these are the athletes who are like, Ben, I can do bar muscle ups. I know that even when I'm a little bit tired, I can confidently get bar muscle ups done. Your strategy in this workout, again, 
just like level two, is to pace the first part. However, I don't want you to pace quite as much. I don't want you to only leave yourself three or four minutes at the end of this workout. Instead, I want you to pace in a way where you might be breaking up the thrusters, you're definitely still breaking up the chest bar. I can do 35 plus chest bar unbroken, and I will still be breaking up my chest bar in every round. I'm probably gonna go six and four, for those who can do some bar muscle ups, I'd suggest maybe breaking up even more than that, potentially three, three, two, two for the chest to bar, or you could do five, three, two, something like that. It doesn't matter what reps you use, I just recommend breaking up the chest to bar so that you have a little bit of freshness when you get to part two with the bar muscle ups. It's extremely important to note that your goal here is to get as deep as you can into that second part. If you only have a few bar muscle ups or maybe you have five bar muscle ups unbroken, it still is gonna be very difficult to complete this workout under the cap. So don't go in expecting that. Instead, you just need to leave yourself enough time to get deep into the second part of this workout. And the only way you're getting deep into the second part of the workout is if you don't have to rest a lot on the second part. And then after that one minute rest, that's when it's pedal to the metal. During that one minute rest, you should be re-chalking your hands. You should have someone else reload or change out barbells. You should be focusing on taking deep breaths, shaking out your arms, because part two after that one minute rest is when your workout really begins. That's when it's time to start to put the pedal to the metal and get as deep as you can into those heavy thrusters and bar muscle ups. If you burn out from part one, you will not be able to get deep in part two. That one minute rest will not be long enough to get your heart rate under control. So it's a game of trying to make sure you're going fast enough to leave yourself enough time for part two. However, not so fast that you're burnout and you have to rest. If we, you watch the announcement, you saw some of the best athletes in the entire world sitting there all at the same time going like this because they went way too fast in the first part of this workout. We're gonna see a lot of high level athletes come in and crush those scores because they pace the first part and then they can go darn near unbroken on the second part. That's not what we want for level three, but we wanna pace the first part and then push hard on part two to the capacity you can handle. I realize I haven't talked too much about the thrusters. The part two thrusters are kind of heavy. It's totally fine to break those up. If you're a level three athlete, you can do four and three. You can break them up into even smaller sets. That's okay as long as you're not wasting a bunch of time on the barbell. Again, the barbell, your goal is to keep your heart rate under control. So it's totally fine to do a few reps, drop, take a breath or two, and then pick up the bar. The goal is so that we don't have to rest transitioning in between rounds and that we can accumulate bar muscle ups quickly. For most people, for almost everyone that's a level three athlete, I highly recommend doing singles on the bar muscle up. It looks like this, we jump, get over the bar, shake it out, take a few breaths. Jump, shake it out, take a few breaths. If you only have a few bar muscle ups, maybe five or six, I assure you when you get here, now is not the time to hit big sets of bar muscle ups. You probably are gonna get a better score if you just chip away, hit singles or maybe small sets of two, maybe three, and just keep moving. We don't wanna see athletes in the level three category saying, I feel great. And then they do the first round of part two unbroken and then they're crushed. And then they're sitting there with their hands on their knees, not doing anything. So be careful not to get trapped into going really fast in that second part in the beginning. Your goal is to get as deep as you can, not to see who can get the first round done the quickest. Now let's talk about level four athletes. These are the athletes who are like, Ben, this is my workout. I think I'm gonna be able to finish this. I can do chest of bars easily and I can crush bar muscle ups. This is the person I am. This is my workout. I'm very excited for this. I still want to reiterate, the first part of this workout is a trap and it trapped every single one of the games athletes in the open announcement. So your goal is to go slow. Like I want you to, like I am literally gonna be like, man, I can go so much faster on this first part. And because of that energy that I'm saving in part one, after that one minute rest, then it's pedal to the metal on workout number two. And when I say pedal to the metal, I still probably will not be going unbroken on the second part. I can almost guarantee it. I might go unbroken on the thrusters because I like heavy thrusters, but when it comes to the barbell, I am absolutely planning to do sets of four and three. So four, drop, shake it out, nice deep breath, knock out three, and then boom, I'm back on the bar. And if I get to the point where I'm starting to redline in the last round or so of the workout, 
I'm going to start to flirt with that red line. There is a chance I might have to go to singles, but singles are okay as long as we keep accumulating reps. It's the person who's always trying to go for these big, unbroken, sexy sets. That's a person who's probably going to get burnt out and they're going to waste all of that time they've made up doing big sets resting on their knees and shaking out their arms because their grip is fried. So you have to play around with that fine line. If you're a level four athlete, you have to rest in the part one of the workout and then push it on part two, but don't allow yourself to go past red line or hit that red line. Because if you do, you're going to have to rest. You might start failing bar muscle ups. You might have to do slower singles, but if you can keep control, then always feel a little fresh coming back to that pull-up bar. That is how you are going to achieve greatness in this workout and get a great score. So I hope that you like this video. We went over a lot. We talked about how to get your first chest bar, how to get your first bar muscle. We talked about the different strategies to approach this workout. It's very important that you figure out what level you're at. So in the comments below, let me know which level do you think you are? If you're trying to decide between level one and level two, you're like, Ben, I can do chest bar, maybe I can do a bar muscle up, then go level two. Try to get those bar muscle ups. Leave yourself three or four minutes at the end and crush it. If you're someone that's maybe level three, level four, I'd say if you can't do more than 10 bar muscle ups, you're in level three. If you can do 10 plus easily, then maybe you're in level four, okay? So with all those things in mind, let me know in the comment, what level are you at? What is your plan for this workout? There's a ton of strategy involved. I hope that this video helped a little bit. Be sure to check out all the stuff in the description and the top comments for all the bonus material on how to do bar muscle ups, chest to bar, things like that. And remember, it's okay to go slower than you want in the beginning so that you can crush it towards the end, whatever the end means for you in this workout. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, if you want the complete strategy guide, go to wadprep.com slash open and your name and email, and I will send you tons of bonus material completely free to your email inbox. With that, thanks to Sandbar for sponsoring this video. Go to store.sandbar.com, use the code wadprep, add the salve and the Sandbar to your order, and then you'll get that salve for free. This tool is awesome to help prevent rips in this workout, which is a major part of making sure you get a great score in 24.3. And with that, I will see you in my next video. I have a really cool series of videos coming next week once the open is over. So stay tuned and check here on YouTube to see the rest of them. And I will see you in next week's video. Peace. Hey, did you like this video? Well, I have a lot more where that came from, where you can enhance your skills even more and learn a bunch. Click this box to watch my next video.